Divisibility rules for reducing fractions. Here are some rules to help you reduce fractions. Rule for even numbers. If the last digit of both the numerator and the denominator is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, then the fraction can be reduced. Example number one. Our fraction 6 8, we know both 6 and 8 are even numbers. So we can reduce them by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 2. So let's do that. Okay. 6 divided by 2 would be equal to 3, and 8 divided by 2 would be equal to 4. So we know that 6 8 reduces to 3 fourths. The same process, 24 over 30 seconds. We know, again, both 24 and 30 seconds are even numbers, so we can divide both the numerator and the denominator, again, by 2. Which, let's do, 24 divided by 2 is 12, and 32 divided by 2 is 16. And again, we can see both 12 and 16 are both even numbers, so let's divide again by 2. So 12 divided by 2 and 16 divided by 2. 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6, and 16 divided by 2 is equal to 8. Notice the pattern now, and again we know that 6 over 8, even numbers. Let's divide again by 2. And in doing so, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So we can show that 24 30 seconds reduces to 3 fourths. And we did that by showing we reduced first by 2, and then by 2 again, and then by 2 again. So this is the same as reducing by 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. We could have divided 24 30 seconds by 8. So let's try doing that. Let's see what happens. 24 30 seconds. Let's divide that by 8, and let's divide again our numerator and denominator by 8. 24 divided by 8 is equal to 3, and 30 second divided by 8 is equal to 4. So just another way to indicate if we divide our initial fraction by the greatest common factor, in this case it was 8, we will still end up with our fraction reduced in lowest terms. Rule for the number 10. If both the numerator and the denominator end in 0, then both can be divided by 10. The example that we have here is 20 over 30. One quick way to divide fractions that end in 0 would be, of course, just to cross out the 0. In doing so, you're really dividing by 10. So this now reduces to 2 thirds. And we can see, of course, 20 divided by 10 would be 2. 30 divided by 10 would be 3. The same process applies for 40 over 100. Let's just cross out our zeros, and we end up with 4 over 10. But looking back at what we learned before, in this case, both our numerator and our denominator, they're even numbers. So we can divide by 2. 4 divided by 2, and 10 divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 would be, of course, 2, and 10 divided by 2 would be 5. So we know that 40 over 100 reduces to to two-fifths. Rule for the number five. If the last digits of the numerator and denominator are fives, or are fives and zero, then both can be divided by five. The example that we have here, 25 over 30. Let's look at our last digits, and we have a five and a zero, so we know we can divide by five. So 25 divided by five, and 30 divided by five. 25 divided by 5, of course, is equal to 5, and 30 divided by 5 is 6. So we know that 25 over 30 reduces to 5, 6. The same process, 15 over 25, let's look at our last digits here. In this case, they are both 5s. So we can divide both our numerator and our denominator by 5. 15 divided by 5 is equal to 3. 25 divided by 5 is equal to 5. So we know that 15 over 25 reduces to 3 fifths. Rule for the number 3. If the sum of the digits of each number in the fraction can be evenly divided by 3, then both can be divided by 3. The example that we have is 27 
over 84. Well, again, let's look at the sum of the, of the digits that we have here. 2 plus 7 is equal to 9. Well, we know that 9 can be divided by 3. Now let's look at 8 plus 4, and that's equal to 12. And we know that 12 can be divided by 3. So this is kind of a neat little trick here. So let's look at 27 over 84. And using our rule, let us divide both our numerator and our denominator by 3. 27 divided by 3 is equal to 9. 84 divided by 3 would be equal to 28. So using our little rule, we know that 27 over 84 reduces very nicely to 9 over 28. Non-divisible numbers. Some numbers cannot be divided by either 2, 3, 5, or 10. Here are a few examples of, of some numbers. The numbers 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29. These numbers are examples of prime numbers. And prime numbers only have two factors, one and itself. Notice these are all uneven numbers. Always check to see if the denominator can be divided by the numerator. The examples that we have are 7 over 14, 41 over 82, and 13 over 39. Well, using our little reminder, again, check to see if the numerator can be divided into the denominator. In this case, it can. So we can divide both our numerator and our denominator by 7. And in doing so, 7 divided by 7 would be equal to 1. 14 divided by 7 would be equal to 2. So our fraction of 7 over 14 reduces to 1 half. Again, let's use our same procedure. Let's see if our numerator will divide into our denominator. And in this case, it does. So let's divide again both our numerator and our denominator by 41. 41 divided by 41 is equal to 1, and 82 divided by 41 would be equal to 2. So we know that our fraction of 41 over 82, again, reduces very nicely to 1 half. Our last fraction, we have 13 over 39. And again, let us see if 13 will divide into 39 evenly, and we know it does three times. So let's divide this, our numerator by 13, and our denominator by 13. 13 divided by 13 would be equal to 1. 39 divided by thir 13 would be equal to 3. So in this case, 13 over 39 reduces very nicely to 1 third. One of the questions is, why do we have to reduce fractions in the first place? We'll have a few examples here on the table. Take this plastic tube, PVC pipe. And if you notice, you measure the OD, or the outside diameter of this tubing. It measures, and if you count the spaces there, 1 16th, it's 14 sixteenths. But you wouldn't go to the store and say, I want 1 14 sixteenths to be. You'd have to reduce this. So divide each side by 2, and that equals 2 goes into 14 7 times, 2 goes into 16 8 times. So the answer is 1 and 7 eighths is the OD, not 1 and 14 sixteenths. It's right, it is 14 sixteenths, but you would never use that term. The same if we look at this piece of PVC pipe. The OD of this PVC pipe is 3. If you count the lines there, the 16th is 8 sixteenths. You wouldn't go to the store and say you're looking for a piece of PVC tubing, and the OD is 3 and 8 sixteenths. You would want to reduce this to the lowest terms. Divide each side by 8, divide each side by 8, and that equals 3, and this will equal 1 over 8 goes into 16 two times. The OD of this PVC pipe is 3 and a half inches. The same is for this paper. 
when you measure this paper, it's eight and a half this way, and it's 11 the other way. And, but if you measure the lines, it's actually eight and eight sixteenths, the same as three and eight sixteenths. And we know that that goes to three and a half. And so when you go to the store, you always ask for paper that measures eight and a half by 11. So as you can see, and there's many applications, you always, when you go to the marketplace, you always reduce your fractions. Please pause the video now and complete the problems in your workbook. When finished, press play and we'll continue with the next lesson.